Hi everyone and thanks for joining us today. I'm Samantha Pover and I'm the Business Growth and Relationship Manager here at Visit Lincoln. And today uh, we have a very uh, special guest. I'm very excited to speak to Zoe, who is the uh, Web and Marketing Director at Epics Media. And Zoe's very kindly uh, agreed to spare a little bit of her time and speak to us today about websites and how you can improve them, what's important about them, and generally an overview of what you need as a small business to help you develop and go forward. So Zoe, would you like to tell us today all about, uh, give us an insight really, and, and, and uh, give us your specialist knowledge on websites, please. Lovely. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for inviting me to, to speak to your partners today, Samantha. So as um, Samantha said, I run a Lincoln-based creative studio, Epics Media. I also sit on the LEP board of directors as I've their digital ambassador as well, which is um, always really exciting. And it's great, great to be able to connect with businesses in, in that way as well. Um, at Epics, we help ambitious brands reach their audiences, both online and offline, offline through um, brand, design, web, video and marketing services. And everything we do follows our proven approach, strategy, creativity and implementation. So strategy is where we do the research, the planning and build the foundation of a project. And this is what really sets us apart because we're all about making sure our work speaks to the right audience in the right way and making sure that our creative gets results. Um, creativity is where we design and build any um, given project. Um, create it, whatever it may be. And implementation is where we work with clients to use clever marketing and advertising techniques to help them get a return on their investment. So that gives you a bit of an idea of who I am and, and what Epics does. But I've been asked to talk to you specifically about web today. Whilst I spend much of my time running and growing Epics, I am a web developer by trade. And it's obviously one of our company's specialist areas as well. So web is a really big subject. It's just huge. Um, and we're really strong believers in understanding as much as possible in order to make strong, informed decisions that have the best chance of success. So I want to cover just two topics this morning. So for me, there are two huge areas of web design that often get little attention, but they make a big difference. So we're going to talk about understanding purpose, first of all, and then how people interact with your website, along with a few tips on changes that you can make as well. So I'm hoping that this will allow you to create your own understanding and start to be able to consider the changes that you need to make in order to ensure your digital experience is as strong as possible for your customers. So let's dive right in. So understanding purpose. And this is all about understanding your website's purpose. So giving your website one single primary purpose informs how your website should look and how it should work. You can have secondary purposes but they should be truly secondary and not competing with your primary purpose for attention. Otherwise, they're not secondary. <laughs> You've got a whole heap of primary purposes. It's just a bit confusing. So typically, we find that most websites have one of three purposes. So the uh, first one is driving sales or a specific conversion. So this could include an e-commerce site that literally sells products. So you want the sale of those products to be the predominant purpose. Or it could be a different type of conversion. So perhaps signing up for membership um, or making a booking um, or generating a sales inquiry. So kind of it's, the, it's that first step in the process, but you want that, that lead or that sale. The second one is building trust and credibility. Uh, so this works well for businesses that drive leads elsewhere or where the website isn't at the start of the sales journey. So it might be partway through and needs to reinforce certain things about the business and its product or service. So the audience will be using the website as a verification tool, essentially. Now, typically, we see this most in service-based businesses who have proactive sales teams that are taking care of lead generation. Ultimately, that's most commonly where that, that purpose becomes the main one. And then finally, we have to educate. So there are lots of organizations that need to educate first and sell second. So this fits any product or service that may need to educate their audience before they'll be, be able to be ready to hand over their cash. Um, best example of this is solicitors. Uh, so consumers will often Google a legal issue or a question before they commit to speaking with a professional or making a purchase. And we know from our research that consumers are far more likely to remember the first resource that helps answer their query. 
So studies show that we remember and are more likely to believe the thing that we read first. Yeah. Um, therefore, things like user experience and search engine optimization become vital to an education focused website because you need to be seen first, you need to be there first. So that's three potential purposes, to drive sales, to build credibility, or to educate. So knowing which of these you need to lead on will help you shape the content you display on your website, where the eye needs to be drawn, and how you structure those pages. If you're driving sales, everything needs to be steered towards that all-important buy button or inquiry form. If you're building trust and credibility, you need to show reviews, ratings and credentials. And it's vital that your website's design reflects the expectation of your audience as well. You don't want that a disjointed process as they're trying to verify and, and kind of build a, a certain amount of trust by checking you out on your website. And if you're aiming to educate, uh, you need to create a structure that helps lead users through your materials and allows them to discover the right information as quickly as possible. And that's really key because it's all about that discovery process. So not having a single primary purpose for your website is just like not understanding your ideal customer. Um, if your website is trying to achieve too many things or with equal priority, which is why you need one primary purpose, it actually just won't do any of them very well. And what you'll be doing is just essentially shouting lots of different things at your customers all in one go, and they won't really know what, what to absorb and what to take in. So it's really important to have this focus. And once you do, you can view your website through the eyes of your audience with your primary purpose in mind and then plan changes that help your website to reflect that focus. So purpose is really important. It's one of the first questions that we ask a, a prospective customer when we're talking about a website project. What is the one key thing you want it to do? Like I say, you can have secondary. We always want to want them. We want to know what they are. But ultimately, they will never take priority over that primary purpose. And it allows you to go, well, you know, we want people to sign up to our newsletter, but it's not our primary purpose. So it can go down the bottom. It can, you know, it can be discovered later. It doesn't need to be hitting them in the face. So there are heaps of things we can actually do to improve the overall user experience of a website. And I'd be here for hours or, or probably days if I ran through all of them. But instead, I want to talk to you about one area because it, it's really important. It essentially underpins everything. And that's how people interact with websites. So once you understand this, other web design tips start to make a lot more sense. And the cornerstone of this really boils down to one tiny little small statement. And that is that people don't read websites. They scan them. Now, we don't read websites like a book. We don't peel from page to page, reading every word. What we do is we skip through. We scan the contents and the chapter headings. And maybe we even jump to the end to see if the conclusion tells us what we need. And if from that tiny glance, we don't think that book contains what we need, we close it, we put it back on the shelf and we potentially never open it again. And that's how we read websites. But it's okay, because once we understand that users are really unlikely to read our content word for word, we can design for it. And designing for it means we make their experience better. We help them find what they, they need, and we help them find it more quickly. Because once they find the right information, then they'll read word for word. So they will, but only once they've got to the right place. And it doesn't matter whether your website needs to drive leads, build credibility, or educate. If the user gets what they need easily, they're more likely to complete the action you want them to. So there are some really simple techniques that you can use uh, to help your users scan read your website. Just reformatting the words can make a difference. So it can be that simple and it's a really great place to start. So breaking up large block blocks of text is a great first step. How often, think about how often you go on a website and you're met with a, a wall of text and it just makes you cry a little inside <laughs> because you're interested, but it just feels like it's gonna take forever. The risk there is that you then go, oh, I'll look at that later. Um, one client once phrased this to me as uh, getting on the be-back bus. So the be-back bus is actually a one-way trip. You say you're going to get on it and you'll be back later, but you'll never come back. 
Um, and this is where things like subheadings and bullet points and highlighted text and text in boxes are all your friend. And they can easily be used to break down those walls of text. When scan reading, we also only typically read the two or three words of a headline, the first two or three words of a headline or a bullet point. So this means that as we're skipping through a page, users might not catch the fourth word onwards. So we have to be concise or we have to front load our content so that we communicate as much as possible in those first words. So this stops us being able to use headlines that start with how to be and why we are, which actually those first three words, they tell us nothing. I'm sure the end of those is fantastic, whatever they might be. But actually those first three words, they don't tell us anything. So they either force the user to, um, to consume more than they want to, or they just don't because they're scanning and they don't catch the juicy words that tell them what they need to, need to know. And then they miss the thing that's relevant to them. And that's what we want to stop from happening. So this forces us to put more effort into our messaging and content. Um, to help us ensure that it delivers value, even when users are scanning, essentially. So if the user, the idea is that if the user knows what it's about, they can then assess at a glance if it's the right information, and then they'll read. And this happens in split seconds. Like if you think about the amount of information that we consume every day, let alone when we're then going on a deliberate journey to, to procure something for ourselves via the web, um, you know, it, it's the same. Like we're getting all these flashes of things as we're scanning these sites to try and find what we want. And it will be the same on your website. Um, so, so we've got to try and create something that allows us to, to skip through. And that, that's one of the, the areas that's worth thinking about. Um, another one um, is something that we really love to talk about. And James, our marketing manager, just sings about this constantly. And it's the use of read more and click here buttons and links or any similar generic variation. You probably guess where I'm going with this, but buttons are often designed to draw our attention. Um, so commonly they use like blocks of solid color to help them stand out. And this is because they lead us somewhere important. Um, but it also means that it makes them prime scan reading material. And read more and click here assumes the user has read the content around the button. But the chances are, particularly if it's not formatted very well, they haven't. And users are then thinking, read more what? And click here why? And actually, they won't bother finding the answers of those. They'll just skip over them. Um, you know, you, you look at it, you go, well, I don't know what that is, and move on. You won't go, oh, hang on a minute. What, oh, what is that read more? Oh, wait, I'll just reverse and read. Like, it's just, we just don't, it's just not what we do. As much as we'd love to think we might, it just isn't what we do typically when we're, we're skipping through trying to find content. So it's a real missed opportunity. Um, so making your, um, your buttons and links say something meaningful and they can still be short, um, but it's, you know, just read more. Well, it doesn't tell you what you're reading more about. So read read articles, read, read read something, like tell us what it is. And I could talk forever on this subject, as I've said, but you can read more deeply on our website. So in covering those two particular areas um, of, um, of kind of uh, how we consume and view websites. Um, I've got two articles I've created short links so people can get to them really easily. Um, so um, uh, Epics, for those that don't know, it's about EPIX. And um, so the first one is epics.me.uk forward slash eye tracking. And that's for more on how we view websites. We've got some really interesting stuff. It's a bit more detailed. So it looks at the patterns that we, um, we go through when we're looking at a website. And then also epics.me.uk forward slash web copy. And that covers some of what I've already said, but in a bit more detail, that's four copywriting techniques that support scan reading. So they're, they're really digestible kind of good places to start. And whilst you have some downtime, I'd encourage you to properly audit your website. So looking at how it communicates what you do, how easy it is for users to find what they need and how well it reflects your brand. Particularly if you have a booking process or a buying process on your website, it needs to be painfully easy. We're always looking at how we can cut down the steps and cut down the stages and cut down the barriers to entry for anything. 
hopefully we're going to transition into a time where people um, are looking to book more activities at home and stay in the UK for breaks. So not only are you competing locally, but you're competing nationally too. So having a look at how you can make all this stuff easier is going to be really important. Um, I've mentioned two articles already. We spent the last year adding significantly to the articles on our website and have researched and written a lot about user experience. So I'd strongly recommend if anybody's looking for anywhere to start or, you, you know, what they can think about and what they can do, um, heading to epicsmedia.co.uk forward slash articles. And there's just, there's so much on there. And if you've got any questions, you can drop our team a line and they're always happy to help. Um, but I hope that's been helpful. I could have just talked for hours. So I tr tried to keep it meaningful and short and given a starting point. Um, but I'm happy to talk more. So if you've got any specific questions, Samantha, from your partners, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, we have. And uh, thank you, Zoe. I feel like we've almost had a little bit of a, an insight into the psychology of how people think about when they're looking at a website. And I know that, um, to be fair, I am one of those people. I'm very guilty of this. Um, I think it's, I think we're beginning to be, our attention span is getting shorter and shorter <laughs> as each year passes. And I think um, I am one of those people, as you say, is if I see a button that says read more, I, do, I don't do it because I've just, well I haven't I haven't talk, I haven't read what was already written so I don't see why I would want to read any more. I just I, yeah it doesn't kind of make sense to me. So um, totally agree and um, and and I just think yeah people want people do want everything quite quickly and if it isn't a very clear pathway and a very easy route to get there you kind of lose interest and you just click off and move on to something else, don't you? I think um, it is, it's fascinating. Once you learn about it, you recognize the behavior in yourself yeah. and we all do it. I just, I've learned so much about myself and my yeah. own consumption habits. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, it's quite strange being very aware of it all, to be honest, but it is fascinating. We, we, we hundred percent do it, you know, the studies show it, but you'll, you'll recognize the behavior in yourself as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important for those businesses, as you say, to, to understand what is the primary function? What is the most important thing that they want that website to service? What what's the end result that they want? And understanding that then you can work backwards to say, OK, this is what this is what you need to get to. So let's start from here and let's go on that journey. Um, but, yeah, we've got a couple of questions that um, our partners have sent in. So um one is uh, we have lots of smaller smaller smes small businesses that have at the moment due to you know the crisis that they've all gone through have got either little or no available money to spend on their website so is there anything that you could recommend they could do in terms of what they should look at what are their priorities and um, is there anything they could do as a quick win just to make their website a bit better so I think definitely some of what I've said applies here. You know, your improving improving your user experience doesn't need to be necessarily ripping the whole thing up and starting again. I mean, we're actually doing a project at the moment where we've done an, an audit process and they have a small budget for improving their existing website and, and can't do the whole thing. So we've done an audit to pick out all the things that we think are going to deliver the most value. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's important. People can't always scrap what they've done and start again so it's important to be able to do that and and you know the articles on our website we've got lots of digestible content so there is some really like in-depth beefy stuff but there is also some really light touch like our, our we've got top 10 tips for building credibility on a website and um, so you know once you've decided on that purpose you can then go looking for the, the things that you can do to improve it but but just breaking down your content looking at the information you've got on your website and where it is and rearranging things and breaking down big paragraphs into bullet point lists or splitting it up and um, another um, technique that's mentioned on our in one of in the um, copywriting article is um, using an editing technique which we use ourselves when clients send us copy and we're editing it for them and it's just 50 50 50 so you write get get it all out like because I think like I've done it before like you own your business you're very passionate about yes. it and you could could just go on talking about your business till the cows come home um but unfortunately it's not conducive to a good user experience but also it's not always interesting to your users. I hate to say it. I hate to be the person to break it to people, but people care about themselves ultimately. It's what marketing boils down to, isn't it? Is we're looking out for ourselves, not other people most of the time. Um, and you get it, but it gives you that opportunity to just get it all out. 
And then basically you just do a process where you leave it and you come back 24 hours later or more and you aim to cut it down for half. And then you leave it and you come back and you do it again. And if you've written a large amount, you might need to do a couple yes, more times. Yes. But it's just things like that. And then once you've distilled it down, then you can look at breaking things down. Um, but I think that understanding that purpose, just it will give you that clarity in terms of what actually you need to spend your time on because even if you don't have a budget your own time is still valuable Mm -hmm. um, and you can spend I'm sure just days fiddling with your website changing things but you want them to be the things that are worthwhile so I definitely go through that process of identifying you know you know you've probably already done the work to understand who your customers are but just bring all that information back together make sure you've got it there understand who they are what their objective is going to be on your website nail that primary purpose and understand if you do have any secondary ones and then look at your website through those eyes um, and and just tweak things you don't have to yeah you don't have to reinvent the wheel yeah just going through that process of making those little improvements will will put you in good stead and like I said it's the same with booking processes and buying processes can you cut anything down can you ask people for less information and um, you know what do you really need that's what you'd like to know <laughs> yeah. but then there's what you actually really need and sometimes that can make the difference between getting half or double the amount of inquiries just by asking them for less information yeah I think condensing is is what we all need to do and I think as a nation uh we are a little bit guilty sometimes of kind of talking too much of you know we're we're, we're sort of um almost overly polite in the way that we talk around a subject instead of just going right this is this is it. This is what you need. This is it. Yeah. Just, you just don't need all that, that fluffy stuff around. Just that's what you need. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, so that that that's very helpful. Yeah. Um, that's good. Second question then. So for those businesses that have um got a little bit of cash to spare and they are looking at using it in, in terms of their um their websites, tricky one this is because we've been asked. Is branding more important than SEO or can the two even be compared? I mean, a tricky one. So if you could help with that. I think that you've got to understand um, how important brand is in your um, in your bit of the sector and com- and look at your competition. Brand is interesting because it's a really good way to um so brand talking about, we're talking about everything in a brand. So your communication style, the colors you use, the visuals, your, your logo is part of that. Um, how you represent yourself on social media. How, and your brand actually always filters all the way, the way through to customer experience. So, you know, what, what is it like to interact with your brand as a customer? That's part of your brand. Um, so it's important to understand kind of, especially where budget is a concern, what are the expectations within your sector and where are the things that what what is important it's a bit of a fluffy answer I know um but also um how distinctive do you need to be because brand is part of creating distinctiveness um so you know we're really big believers in user experience I think making something look great is the easy bit a lot of the time but what me- what looking great does is it creates distinctiveness and it creates memorability um, but what makes makes ultimately makes people buy is the user experience and the, the easy the ease and the flow of that so they're the kind of important to each other and an seo plays an important part of that but i would say with seo how important is seo is the ser- is google how people are going to find you because if it's not if it's actually that they're going to go on TripAdvisor. Um, or use some other platform to discover you, then it's not worth all the SEO in the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also with SEO, it, it's it's volatile. So um, Google changed their algorithm like 500, 500 plus times a year. It's craziness, it's just craziness. And how easy it is to keep a, a position entirely depends on the competition. So if you've got lots of competitors that are pumping loads, I mean, re- retail, to be honest, I know it's not necessarily a relevant sector, but it's a classic example. Retail is brutal because you're often competing against massive retailers that have got the entire SEO teams in-house pumping hourly effort (laughs) into keeping their top positions. A small business can't compete with that. You just, you never will. So you either have to go really niche 
and optimize there or look at paid platforms where you can better measure return on investment. Um, so it, it just depends, but you've got, I think you've got to take that broad view and make that assessment and, and decide where you should be spending that money. Um, I think that if anybody is thinking about engaging with a business to run and uh, to make changes with precious investment, with precious funds because they're they're a bit few and far between you've got to do that groundwork if a company is not going to do it for you do it yourself because you can waste a lot of money implementing changes that that you're either being sold or you think that you need and actually it's just not a good efficient use of that budget so I would I would recommend spending a couple of hours doing some of that groundwork and really understanding what you need to spend that money on because I would hate to see any business in a climate like this wasting that budget. Yeah. And I think, you know, you made a really valid point there, um, Zoe, that it's understanding your own business and understanding where, where your customers are actually coming from. And like you say, you know, you, there's a very big difference between whether you were a retailer and you had a high street shop or if you're an accommodation provider and if the majority of customers are coming through booking.com you know or TripAdvisor or, or Expedia any of those that's a, that's a different kind of customer journey that they've got to you as opposed to someone on the high street you know one of the chains so I think yeah understanding definitely let's just take a step back and I think sometimes just thinking about your own business and where that journey of where how people get to you is 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 hugely important because otherwise you can be sort of bamboozled with all this all these facts and figures and people telling you that you should do this and you've got to do that and actually sometimes you just got to think about your own clientele and where they're coming yeah. from and how that's going to relate to your business and and I you know I, I'm a big believer in brand uh, branding is like I'm obsessed with, <laughs> with branding and um and I think again for, for a lot of our partners when it comes to branding, actually understand what's the message. Like you say, what is the message you want to give? You know, are you are you bespoke? Are you a little bespoke hotelier? Are you high end? Are you value for money? Do you attract families and dogs and pet? You know, just think about who your audience is, and you know, yeah. you can go very wrong creating this beautiful um brand and and having your fat you know it all looking fancy and actually that's not your target oh, audience yes, at all target yeah, audience. Just, yeah yeah so um yeah. it's been hugely hugely beneficial for I think for our partners to listen to you today and I'm and I'm I do massively appreciate your time I know you're very very busy both yourself and and Will and the team um I'd like to if anybody want does want any advice I would just I'm going to point them in your direction and maybe you can have a chat with them and and I think it's great that they can look on your website and look at those articles and read about the uh, the current things that you're putting on there you've got some great posts on there so thank you again for your time Zoe massively appreciate that and uh, let's hope that uh, all this is over soon and we can all get back to back to normal Indeed. yes yep. thank you thanks Zoe